Hey everybody, welcome in to Compliance Resolution, an advanced six-step scripting to transform patient compliance. I am so excited about this course, and if you bought this course as a singular course, hey there and welcome into the new patient group family. If you bought this course as part of the whole existing patient experience course, I bet you are on a journey that you can't even imagine. There are all kinds of, of sales courses and hospitality courses and all kinds of things in your industry for all kinds of things related on the new patient experience side to try to get to buy. Well, you are diving into a world that I am more excited about than anything, and that's after people buy. There's so many ways to transform people from patients and satisfied ones into super fans of your practice. I'm gonna get more into that in just a minute. If you're part of the new patient group private coaching family, Hey there, appreciate your partnership, and let's dive into an amazing, amazing course where we're gonna learn some transformational skill sets to take patients who are not compliant and get them to become compliant, or patients that already are compliant, and it's always easier to keep them there and be proactive, so we're also gonna teach you that. And here are some skill sets that we're gonna learn. Leadership and culture, this is packed. You know, anything you do, if you're gonna get it implemented effectively, you've got to be a great leader and you've got to have the right culture. So I'm going to reference this many times throughout this course and give you some really unique perspectives on how to be a better leader, how to build a better culture in your office so you can get courses like this actually installed into your business instead of just a great idea that sits on the shelf. I cannot describe to you in words how just happy I am as we build more and more courses on the existing patient experience side. The transformation it can make in your practice is unbelievable and it will relate back to you getting more new patients because your referrals are going to go up your five-star reviews are going to go up etc cetera, etc cetera. another skill set is hospitality look you are in a people first business and we are known as the patient and employee experience company we teach high level experience things how to get what you want by delivering more than expected that is the definition of customer service by the way and hospitality as well as all these other skill sets go into you accomplishing that definition. So hospitality, some advanced skill sets that we're going to work on on the hospitality side. Sales, look, sales is a real word. It is, a, it is you being in a people business to get people to be compliant, to get people to refer to you, to get people to buy from you to begin with. But now we're talking on the existing patient experience side. You've got to be comfortable understanding that you have to be great at sales. This is not a scary word. This is an awesome word because all this word means is you knowing how to educate in a very specific way to place more value on whatever it is you want them to do. And in this course, we want them to be more compliant, right? Your practice is a winner, the more compliant patients are. So we're going to teach you advanced sales skills in order to speak to people in a way to sell them on the value of being compliant, right? And then we're gonna talk about psychology, a lot of this. Look, psychology is one of the most important things you can study because to be great as a leader, and be, you have to understand the psychology of your team so you can speak to them in a way that's unexpected, right? You've gotta understand very advanced hospitality skill sets. And when you say this word, everybody, I cannot emphasize this enough. Hospitality does not mean being nice. Experience does not mean being nice. That is one ingredient of a thousand ingredient puzzle to the overall recipe of customer service and overall experience that you want your team to have and you want your customer and patient to have. These are all so advanced that you're gonna learn in this course. And if you're a single course purchaser, you know, dive into more courses, become a private client, because we dive into all of these as it relates to every role in your office and how to apply it to their job to get what you want at a higher level by delivering more than expected. Sales, advanced skill sets, but you can only be great at these if you know the psychology of the consumer. There, we're gonna dive deep in this course into a ton of different psychological terminologies and teach you what to say, when to say it, how to say it, and why you're doing it, why to say it. You're gonna love it because it's gonna have a significant impact in your favor on your organization. Verbiage, like we're gonna teach you in order to get what you want at a higher level by delivering more than expected, your verbiage skills, and another one that just popped up, your presentation skills are integral in whether or not you're gonna accomplish that definition of customer service and getting what you want by delivering more than expected. 
when we combine all these together, really the ultimate goal in what we teach is we are not trying to teach you how to have satisfied patients. We are trying to teach you how to create super fans of your business. And that is accomplished through exceptional clinical results, of course. Just like a restaurant, a chef has to be amazing at the food if you want to create fans. But it goes way beyond the food, just like it goes way beyond the clinical, final clinical results. This goes into all of these things and your team mastering them. So every interaction that you have with your customer or your patient or your new patient that you want to get to buy is extraordinary, is unexpected. This is how we create super fans, that business side of your practice not just the clinical side of your practice, okay? And this is what I wanna talk about for just a minute. This guy right here, Rob Schaefer, Dr. Rob Schaefer, he's in Champaign, Illinois, right in that area. This is his son, who as I do this video today, is getting close to becoming out of ortho school, gonna be joining Rob, and I am so proud of this guy. He's one of our best uh, customers at implementing A to Z, our whole program. He's been a private client for a long time. And I want you to focus in something. There is a jacket he's wearing in the airport. And what does it say, right? It says new patient group. Look, customers, satisfied ones, satisfied patients at your practice don't go around wearing your logo. They don't go around talking about you. They don't interact on social media. They don't become part of your sales force. Super fans do. And this family, this kid's gonna knock it out of the park just like his dad because his dad is a learner, he's a go-getter, he wants to keep learning, he's got a growth mindset, he wants to keep getting better and better and better, of course clinically, but also on the business side that will determine whether or not you're creating a super fan of your office. This is what you want your patients to do. Wear your gear all around the community, right? And that's what we're gonna be, that's what we teach throughout our whole company, everything we do is experience oriented to create fans. But as it relates today, assistants watching this, and hopefully you're watching it with the whole team because that is how you're gonna get the most out of this is doing it together, taking notes together, role playing, learning together. That creates the right culture, creates the right environment, and you will implement this at a far higher level than if you try to knock it out in five minutes and assistant, you do this and you do this and you do this. Now slow down, do it together. You're gonna get a lot out of this. I'm gonna reference that again here momentarily, but let's create fans of your practice. Now, what can this course help with? Now, if you're, again, if, if you bought this as part of the whole existing patient experience, you're gonna get these, on, these results I'm about to talk about on steroids. But if you're a single course purchaser, this is the only one you have, you're gonna be able to accomplish this as well when you get really good at this. And I have an exercise for you all to do. I'm gonna want you to pause me for just a second. Hopefully you're watching this with your team. If you're not office manager, doctor watching this, if you actually pause this and think to yourself, what would life look like? What does my day, week, month, year, the past five years look like if I'm able to accomplish this? If I get my patient compliance to increase by 30%, what does that look like, right? Imagine all the headaches you have the, the non-profitability that you are achieving when people are not compliant that leads to these emergency appointments and other unnecessary appointments as well. This all is the big culprit of the chaos in your office, right? So if you could increase the patient and in compliance 30 plus percent, what does that do for your organization? If you could reduce emergency appointments 30 percent, what does that do for your organization? Just these two things here are just extraordinary on the impact it will have for your efficiency, reducing your chaos, just being happier, reducing your headaches, and be able to be that people first business that is very hard to be when everyone's running around with their heads cut off and going to get the next patient and grabbing this patient and finish up a tray and blah, 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 all the experience, all the things that you have at your office that create the chaos. Again, that's not being a people first business. That let, that's letting the practice get in the way of what we want you to become is that rich Carlton that happens to offer orthodontics, that montage that happens to offer dentistry, et cetera, right? The rich Carlton isn't selling a hotel room. The hotel room comes with what they're selling. Same way with you. When you can buy Invisalign anywhere and you can get braces anywhere, you know, five, six, eight choices within 10 minutes of my house, that's no longer what people are buying. Right? They are buying the other things, right? And that's why all of our training, all of our courses are so impactful. But as it relates to here, these two things allow you to offer a better experience for yourself, for your team, 
and ultimately the person you want to buy from you. And then what we're talking about today, the people that already have bought from you. All other appointments too, if you're buying this as part of the whole existing patient experience course, you're gonna get a lot of information on how to reduce every appointment you have in office by 10%. But this course, if, you're, if you just bought this single course, is still gonna teach you and you'll get on your way to the journey because the more compliant people are, the less emergencies you have, the more efficient you can be when people do show up, okay? And when they're there and you're more efficient, there is a way to offer a better experience and reduce every single in-office appointment by 10% or more. And we're gonna to touch on that in this course. Now, this right here is the whole kind of a picture of the whole existing patient experience, right? It all starts with the mindset and the culture and the leadership, it always does. Uh, the digital marketing is a big piece of how do you do video marketing to the people that have already bought from you. It's a big piece of this. This is a lot of stuff, as you can see, and this doesn't even include everything we do on the existing patient experience side. But in particular, this course that we're diving into is gonna hit on compliance resolution, right? Again, how do we take patients that are not compliant and how do we get them to become compliant fans of your practice, okay? Also, how do we keep people that are compliant and are happy and are doing great, how do we keep them there? Because a lot of times as humans, I'm gonna mention this in a moment, we get very reactive, and I'm gonna reference that here in just a minute. We're also gonna talk briefly job descriptions and ortho coach model. I'm gonna hit on that in another exercise that I want you to do here momentarily, all right? And, and this ortho coach model is a game changer. If you have, again, the whole course, it goes into this. I'm gonna reference it in this course, and a lot of it is just a mindset shift on who's responsible for compliance, all right? Hospitality and sales training. That is the biggest one that we're gonna dive into, really with everything we do, but especially in this course, is training assistants watching. Your career and the value you can offer the business, the practice, will skyrocket if you become exceptional at these. If you really learn what I'm gonna teach in this course, study it hard, role play it hard, be the person that when nobody's looking, you are executing at an amazingly high level. This will do amazing things for the organization. End of treatment consult. I'm gonna reference this. This is something in our, in our whole program that we talk about and set up. I'm gonna reference it in this course on when you would actually deliver the six steps that you're gonna to learn today. All right, now, all of that being said, let's talk about the six steps to compliance. What are we gonna dive into in this course? And the very first one is we're gonna ask a probing question. We're gonna learn what those are, the psychology around a probing question. Very powerful, and again, it's really important to, for you to all study these things, understand these things, because they have such a profound impact if you're able to deliver it in a sincere, non-scripted way, all right? But you still have to learn the script first. Second, we're gonna listen, and we're gonna learn to listen with intent, with a purpose. That's a really important uh, education I'm gonna give you when we teach that, when we get to that portion in that particular lesson in this course, and also learning how to respond with empathy. Look, we are not empathetic humans. You're gonna hear me talk about that later, and empathy is one of the best leadership traits, and it's one of the best marketing investments. If your team shows empathy to the customer or the patient, if you show empathy to your team, that's where it always starts, because your team's never gonna show empathy to patients or customers if the leadership team doesn't show empathy to them. So that's gonna dive into some really powerful lessons along this journey to compliance. Transitional phrase, this will teach you how to take control and make sure you're in charge of the conversation. Typically in the sales environment, the person that's in control of the conversation is on a better path to getting what they want, okay? So we're gonna teach you very specific skill sets how to do that. Then we're gonna talk about what's called the consequence approach. And I'm gonna dive in to three very powerful things, abbreviated CTM. Those are very powerful. We're gonna teach you how to speak in a very specific order delivering a consequence approach whenever you're talking and educating towards compliance. Then we're gonna kind of flip that and we're gonna talk about a solutions approach using the CTM model again, all right? You're gonna learn a powerful psychological term called effective frequency in this course. These two things are in place to, to accomplish 
that repetitive messaging, all right? So very important pieces of the script. And then we're gonna dive into commitment questions, the psychology around it, essentials within a commitment question that, that are intended to be accomplished and that you must speak in a way in order to accomplish those things. And then we'll do a, a final lesson where we're gonna wrap it all up and put it all together. There's a really cool PDF uh, document that comes with this that is amazing. It, it outlines the course, it has printouts, it's things you can put by the assistant's chairs, it's things that you can study from, take notes on. So make sure to print that out. If you're watching this on the YouTube station, for whatever reason, it'll be a link that'll take you there. If you're in our LMS digital platform watching this, it's an attachment that you will see in there and it's really well done. It will help you out a lot. Matter of fact, I, I encourage you to print that out if, as you go through these. If you're going through ask a probing question as an example, make sure you have that portion of the script in front of you. It's gonna help you a lot and again, take, uh, you'll be able to take notes on it and, and refer back to things like this. We're about to wrap up this introduction, but I also want to throw this out there. I want to ask you what should or when should this conversation happen? Okay, and it's really important. I'm going to reference this throughout the course, but, but doctors watching, team members watching, a, a big problem that we have is we are very reactive animals, right? Our marriage gets in trouble, we hire counselors. We lose money, we try to make money. We gain weight, we try to lose weight. Like it, it, we're always reactive, right? We get chaotic, so we implement remote monitoring. Instead of using remote monitoring before it gets chaotic, we're very reactive. So I want you to remember the six steps that you're gonna learn are fantastic and they are intended for people that have fallen off that wagon, if you will, and you're trying to get them back on, right? So that's what it's intended is, is non-compliant people how do we get them compliant? And you've all dealt with it. You, you deal with, you know, little Joey who mom thinks can do no wrong and she's totally like, I can't make Joey do anything. Uh, these are conversations, everybody. And I, I was an umpire in professional baseball for a while, many years ago. And a lot of the teachings in this course that you're gonna learn are from how they taught us. You, you rigorously role play as a professional baseball umpire. Thousands of hours of on, just like a pilot where it's ongoing training. As an umpire, it's the same way. The strikes, balls, out safes, the things that you see, easy part of the job. It's the conflict resolution. It's getting people to do what you want. It's calming them down. It's a, being an authoritative figure, having the right presentation skills, verbiage skills. That is stuff they work endlessly on. And a lot of that training from professional baseball, I am going to train you on in this course because a lot of it is what I took out of that and put into this course and tweaked it for your profession and how to apply it to your customer and to your patients. But the point of this is here is that we can't use time as a reason that we're not going to do this, all right? Because if we do, we get into this situation where we get punched in the face, everything becomes reactive, everything is chaotic, and then you wonder why people aren't compliant, okay? We've got to be proactive and we have to use what you're going to learn in this course and to have that education with people that are compliant. Let's keep them there. Let's not just wait until they fall off that wagon because it's harder to take non-compliance to compliance. It's easier to take compliance and keep it at compliance, all right? So this is a great course for both situations. We can't let time be an excuse. So here's an exercise I wanna end this introduction on. All right, we're gonna do this together. You're gonna to put me on pause here in just a second. You're gonna do this together. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna talk about each one. And we're gonna wrap it up and get fired away here, all right? Very first one is I want you to talk about why does compliance happen? Doctors, if you're watching this on your own, I want you to go through this exercise and then go through the exercise with your team again after you've invested in this course. Make sure you're doing this. Why does compliance happen? Two, who is responsible for ensuring customers, patients, whatever you wanna call it, are compliant? Who's responsible? Right, the third one I want you to discuss is when does compliance begin? Right, does compliance begin after purchase, before purchase, uh, you know, three weeks into purchase? When does compliance begin? The other one is when a patient is not compliant at your office, who is currently held responsible for that? All right, that one is a really important one going back to job descriptions. And lastly, are you always compliant? And this is kind of a funny one because obviously the answer is none of us are always compliant. So go ahead and pause me, do this exercise. We'll see you back here in just a second. All right, welcome back in. And hopefully you did that exercise together as a team. And I wanna walk really quickly through each one because this requires, it's a bit of a mindset shift 
from where you're likely at today. Okay, and this mindset is important as you move into this course to really understand some really important things. First of all is why does non-compliance happen? Look, the reality of the situation is, is non-compliance happens. Is the patient customer responsible? Is, is part of it on their shoulders? Of course, right? Just like when you hire somebody to help you like with this course, right? It, it's partly on your shoulders to make sure you watch it with your team. You all take notes, you all role play together, you do it repetitively, you constantly come back to it, you have the script, you consistently practice week over week to build the skill sets, right? That's being compliant, right? That's what we would teach you if you were a private client. It's why our private clients do so well, okay? They're master implementers. But the reality too is, is it's on you as a business, it's on you as a practice. Employees, it's on all of you. Right? So when non-compliance happens, a lot of times is because the chaos in the office, packed waiting room, uh, Nancy walks in, she sits down for 20 minutes, yet you want to charge her if she no-shows you. Right? There, it, it just, you're, you're setting up a tray, dropping off your patient, getting the next patient, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Ah, chaos. Okay? This is why compliance happens. If you want patients to be compliant, you must rethink things inside your office and become that people-first business. Who is responsible for ensuring customers are compliant? Kind of the same thing is that yes, this falls on your patient's shoulders, but far more, it falls on your shoulders. Just like us with our private clients to get them to be compliant. It's a constant education, constant sale, constant motivation. You're the same way. If you want people to be compliant, it's a constant sale, constant hospitality, constant education, constant motivation, constant coaching, right? That's what we live with with the consumer in any type of business, right? So you are responsible. When does compliance begin? What this one is simply is that treatment coordinators watching, you have to remember that the better educator you are, the more you're going to set your team up for success. So every business really has two sales. It's one, you got to get people to buy from you, right? Otherwise you don't have a business. Employees, you don't have a job. Right? But the other one is, is once they buy, you got to sell them on being compliant. And this is an ongoing process. And this is why I wanted to ask this, is that somebody has to be held responsible for it. Okay, this here is part of the ortho coach job model, the job description I was referencing in a previous slide, where it actually is in the job descriptions for all the assistants. And you are assigned patients throughout treatment. Joey buys from you. He has an 18-month Invisalign treatment. He sees one assistant the whole time. And you, doctor leadership team, you can tie so many things back. You will have visibility like you can't believe. And that's another course and a big thing we implement it. And it works tremendously. There are no negatives and all the what ifs that tend to come up, they don't even happen. It is an amazing, an amazing model that transforms compliance, transforms patient experience. And in that role, the assistants have in their job description, they are held accountable for their patients. If their patients aren't compliant, it goes back to extreme ownership, an amazing leadership book, okay? It goes back to it's on the assistant's shoulders. And you can have visibility assistance is great because you can have visibility of, you know, your 30 patients you're in charge of or 50, whatever the number is. You can see if they're compliant. You can see if they're getting done with treatment on time or early. Doctors, you can bonus the assistance if somebody's not compliant, if the assistant gets them back on board to be compliant. Amazing, amazing role. But this here, everybody, it has to be in your job description. It is not the patient's fault. It is the way you speak. It is the internal operations of the business that creates the non-compliance. And I get it. There's always going to be the non-compliant people no matter what you do, okay? But those are the what ifs. The majority of people that are not compliant, you can get them to be compliant. If you become an expert, if you become a coach, if you become good at sales, hospitality, all the things you're going to learn, you will accomplish it. And last, are you always compliant? And I almost talked about this before we went to exercise. But look, all of us are not compliant. And the more entrepreneurs like me, I'm an entrepreneur. We're horrible at compliance, <laughs> okay? So and you got to remember that too. I have podcasts coming with a new patient group podcast about this. Uh, one of the podcasts is I do this today. I haven't done it. But, but it's called The Four Parenting Styles of Business. And it talks about things like you know the, the patient compliance that you have in your office very much depends on the parenting style at home, right? They bring their culture inside your office. But all of us have not, we've hired somebody, we didn't do what they say, right? Just like with you, if you watch this course and you don't do it together and you don't do it methodically and you don't implement it and you don't become great at it, you only have yourself to blame because that's the recipe of implementing on-demand courses well. 
If you have each assistant, you watch it, you watch it, you watch it, do it a quick, do it a quick. You're not gonna implement it, okay? That's how you become a master implementer. So that's called being compliant with us, all right? But this exists, we aren't compliant, we've all broken the rules, right? And again, that's on our shoulders, but it's also on the company's shoulders that we dealt with, all right? So all that being said, we are going to get started, all right? Compliance resolution, I am pumped about this course. It is transformational. This six step scripting to transform non-compliance into compliance and without anything else being said, let's get started.